Hi, Martin. <laughs> I think you should be able to hear me. Okay, it is 2.30 and I can listen to instructions. So I am going to get started and uh, hopefully we'll have a few other people join us as we move along. Um, but uh, again, feel free to introduce yourself and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and, uh, and we'll get started. I am happy to take questions as we go through things and uh, hopefully we'll get through everything in the 20 to 25 minutes that I have allotted because I like to talk a lot. Okay, so I do have a few slides. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about secrets to social media success in a pandemic. It's really a crazy time right now. And, you know, things are changing on a day to day basis. And one of the things that's really remained constant throughout everything is social media and your digital presence. And a lot of people aren't really sure how to really capitalize on that. Hi, Navina. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, so, yeah, so today we're going to talk a little bit about how you can capitalize on social media during this crazy time when we're all focused on social distancing and being on our computers and eye strain from being on the computer for too long. Hands up if that's you, because it's definitely me. Um, but it's these types of events, even though they're digital, that really make things a lot easier right now. So I know you're probably wondering a little bit about who I am. Oh, Harold, you just got new glasses. Fantastic. I like to hear it. Um, I'm probably going to start increasing my glasses collection. I normally wear contacts, but this has been crazy. So this is just a little about me. We're going to gloss over this. This is not the important stuff. Um, obviously, we want to get to some really actionable tips that you can actually use and you can walk away and you can say, okay, this is what I'm going to do for my business. So just a little about me, I am a founding partner at Songbird Marketing Communications, and we work with small businesses and medium-sized businesses and oftentimes individual experts to really help to find a voice in the industry and rise above competitors and really figure out that what makes you unique and to help you just stand out. And one of the things that we do a lot of is social media. Um, we do social media strategy and social media management. So I know a little bit about this. Um, I would never claim to know everything there is to know about social media, but hopefully I can share a few things with you today that you can walk away and you can implement for your own business. So the first thing that I want to talk about is for your social media to be successful right now, you really want to be able to identify any behavioral changes that uh, that have happened in your uh, within your audience. And I know Nikki this morning is or at this morning. What time is it right now? Who knows? Who knows even what time is it? Um, so Nikki at the session just before this one was actually talking about um, consumer behavior. And so a lot of what she's talking about really ties in with this. Um, but there are some questions that you should definitely ask yourself um, of your audience and of your business before you kind of move into changing things up in your strategy or jumping into a social media strategy. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're shifting your approach to match the answers to these questions. And the first question you should ask yourself is, is your audience directly affected by coronavirus? Um, you know, has, are they working right now? Have they lost their job? Um, you know, do they have an income? Is their family among the high risk groups that are out there? So their behavior has completely changed because of coronavirus? Or is it something that, you know, it's just regular everyday things are happening for your audience and they haven't really been affected? Um, you also want to ask yourself, can they still use my product or service? And the other thing is, if they can use it, 
do they have to change how they're using it? So for example, if you have a product that someone can purchase, um, do they need to come and pick it up from you now rather than going into a store? Um, you know, are they going to use it in different ways? So for example, it could even be um, something that's more of a personal uh, or lifestyle object as well. And so it could be something that they're just using it in different ways around the house because people aren't going out as often. So are they still using it? Can they use it? And are they using it differently? Because those are things that you want to communicate with them. Have their priorities shifted during this time? You know, a lot of people have shifted to saving versus spending. And when they do spend, it, they need to make sure that it's really, it's a meaningful spend and it's something that uh, is not going to affect them negatively in the future because people aren't really sure what's happening right now. They don't know when things are going to open up again fully, uh, when everyone's going to feel completely comfortable going out and being in crowds and everything like that. Um, even though, you know, some businesses are taking measures measures to make people a little bit more comfortable. Uh, it can be a little bit tough for people to know. And so you have to know how have their priorities shifted during this time. And are you still as high up on the uh, high up, you know, on things in their list of priorities than you were before the pandemic hit? Are they spending more time on social media? Chances are your audience is spending more time on social media. So many studies have been done and there's lots of different stats that are floating around, but chances are it's at least 25% more time that they're spending on social media, which is why social media is so important right now. Uh, you know, they're watching more videos. Are they including themselves in discussions and forums? And are they taking in more digital content like blogs and things like that? So you really need to know, you know, what's going on with their social media before you can actually change up your social media strategy. Um, definitely. So Evan has asked, uh, in uncertain and isolating times, are businesses, business audiences more receptive, receptive to learning about the person behind the business as well as their business offer? Absolutely. You should always talk about the person behind the business. Sometimes it's equally as important as what you actually have to offer. Um, people right now are looking for a personal connection and they're looking for ways to really connect with people in a digital way because we can't really meet face to face. And so you really do need to open up a little bit more personally. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the slides upcoming. Good, great question, Evan. Um, you also need to ask yourself, how have their purchase habits shifted? Um, are they buying things more online? Are they comfortable buying things online? Uh, you know, do they, are they, is your audience, do they need that tactile, tangible experience? And how can you really create that for them if you are creating it through digital platforms? And so those are the questions that you really need to ask yourself so you can see how things have shifted for them. And then you can attract, you can change your approach to attract your audience there. We'll throw that word attract in there. We're just tripping over words as we go, like stones on a path. Um, so the next thing that you really need to look at is you have to define your social media purpose. And this is a really important one. You should be doing this anyway, regardless of whether there's a pandemic or not. Um, but you really need to look at the fact that you have to provide value at all times. Um, you have to think about what that value is for you as a business. And there are often, you know, three different types of content that you can really look at for people. Um, people want to hear about special offers that you have, especially right now if they're price sensitive. Um, they want to be able to learn something new and they want to be able to hear about uh, products and innovation and who you are as a business. And so that mix of the three things is going to help you to provide value. And the way you do it, you have to think about whether you're looking at entertainment as part of your content or information, or it could be a combination of both, if that makes sense. And oftentimes, I like to say that a really healthy mix of both is a great way to approach your social media content. But you obviously have to look at how your audience is responding to the different types of content that you're putting out there so you can tweak things as you go. Um, you know, it should really still reflect you as a brand. So if you are, you know, a very corporate brand and you're very serious and you like to do things in the box, you're probably not going to start posting a bunch of cat videos and funny things to entertain people. You still want to keep it on the informational side, but you want to think about ways that you can change things up so that you can really attract people. Um, and so really all of it 
doesn't matter what your social media purpose is, it needs to, you need to make sure that you address your audience needs within that purpose. So if your purpose right now, your sole purpose is to sell, um, then you can make that your sole purpose, but it still has to address the needs of the audience that you have. If your sole purpose is to connect with people because maybe you can't sell your product right now, then you really have to look at that connection and informing people about the processes and informing people where you are within the pandemic and how they can get a hold of you and all of those different things. And you want to keep them entertained by your brand you want to keep them connected to your brand so that when you can eventually sell to them when they are going to start buy from buying from you they're going to think about you first and so it doesn't matter even if you can't really run your business fully helping helping you to keep that connection through social social media is really the way that you're going to carry yourself through this pandemic because really nobody really knows what's happening right now. It's kind of the wild, wild west right now. And a lot of things are opening up across provinces. Uh, but with those changes, come um, changes that need to happen in your marketing strategy and social media will inevitably be affected because you really want to make sure that you are absolutely communicating with your audience on a regular basis, which brings me to my next slide. And if I'm going too fast through everything, let me know. If you have questions, pop them in. Hi, Doreen. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, it's so weird not to have faces in front of me. So even if you want to tell a joke in the chat, feel free to do that. It's fine. Um, and uh, if you need anything specific from me, definitely let me know as we're going through this. Um, so communication is obviously important when it comes to social media because it is a form of communication. It's how you connect with your audience. It's how you talk to them. Um, so there are a couple of things that you need to do before you can actually communicate with them effectively. Um, and so what you need to do um, is you need to inform yourself first. And I talked a little bit about all of the changes that are happening on a regular basis. Hands up if you got a million emails and you saw a million social media posts at the beginning of the pandemic about what was happening and those updates from businesses that you, you know, you saw that everyone's washing their hands and they're changing their policies when it comes to shipping and, uh, you know, just informing people exactly what was going on. Hands up. Anybody? Nobody? I'll put, oh, there we go, Carrie, excellent. I will put both my hands up and my feet if I could bend that way right now. I'm kind of trying to keep. Um, yeah, so tons, tons of emails coming in, tons of everything. And sometimes I found personally that all of those emails and all of those social media posts weren't actually even warranted because I found that there wasn't really enough of a change to really update your audience. And so you have to make sure that you're informing yourself of those changes and you're communicating with your audience once a change happens and that you're doing it in a way that makes sense. And again, it always comes back to providing value to your audience and to what they need from you. The other thing you have to do is you need to focus on the facts. And this is something that I oftentimes do have trouble with depending on the situation. I'm an emotional person. I come from an entertainment background. So some people say I have all the, motion, the emotions and I have them all at the same time. Um, but I like to pull myself back when I'm doing things for business. Um, and I like to say focus on the facts. Emotions are very high right now. And you don't need to muddle all of those personal emotions that your audience is having um, by being highly emotional on your own social feeds. That's not to say that you can't address those emotions and you can't speak to people and you can't connect to people in those ways. But you have to do it in a way that makes sense for your brand. And you have to do it in a way that's not going to make people feel worse than they already do. You can commiserate while not making people feel worse. You can be understanding while not making people feel, feel worse. And so you have to make sure that you're really focusing on the facts and, um, and you're looking at it that way. You're taking that factual approach. The other thing that you need to look at is your messaging. When you started your business, you might have, you should have uh, created a messaging document. And this messaging document is really kind of, it's the roadmap that you can take 
uh, for all of the communications that you put out there. It's your website content, your social media content, um, your emails, your oftentimes your blogs and your calls to action and all of those different types of things. If you're doing media, it's good for that. It's good for influencer relations. Um, but that messaging is so important. And now it might change a little bit in terms of you may add messaging related to the pandemic. And it's good to actually write that down and add that to your messaging document so that you know that you're, A, you're not changing who you are as a brand. That's really important. That's kind of, that's an extremely important thing. Even if your business has pivoted, you as a brand and your brand values and the way you feel, it should never change. Um, unless you've done that much of a drastic change, um, then it should never change. But you should actually create some messaging that's really related to the situation that we're all in so that you can always come back to that messaging. And it could be even about um, opening hours. It could be about how you are cleaning your stores. It could be about your shipping policies. It could be about anything that's related to the pandemic and even some of the social movement that we're that we're in right now as well and you should be always relating your communications back to this messaging so you can make sure that you are being consistent with everything that you're doing and the last thing that you want to look at is you want to make sure that you're creating very visual content the idea is that with so many people spending more time on social media it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you wanna be able to stop their eye from scrolling through. If it's Instagram, you're obviously fighting against a lot of different visual content, so you have to find ways to make yourself stand out. Um, you know, things like Twitter, where not everybody uses images, it's a great time to try to create those images and that video content and really put yourself out there. I know for a lot of people, putting yourself out there on video is a hard thing to do, uh, but it is something that will put you in a good position in the long run. And so you want to really make sure that you're really tapping into that idea of visually connecting with your audience so it's not just your words and you want to tie your visuals into the words the messaging that you created and so once you've gone through all of that and you've created all of these things as part of a strategy then you can start creating amazing content for your social media channels and you want to make sure that you're always tapping into that information the facts your messaging and those visuals to create a really clear communication strategy to help you to connect with your audience on a more on a deeper level really is what you're looking for. And so the last thing that I wanted to talk about in a little bit more detail because I'm quite passionate about <laughs> this one if you know me you know that I talk about this quite often but the one thing that people forget about when it comes to social media is that it's meant to be social. There is the word social in there for a reason. I will say this till the cows come home, all of the different analogies you can think of. Engagement is always going to be more important than your follower count. You need to be social. You need to create those relationships with people. You have to look at building a community on social media and you need to do it in a way that makes sense and that it's meaningful. So. Um, a lot of people get caught up in the fact that, oh, you know, I want a really big community on social media. And this doesn't change during a pandemic. It's still going to be engagement that you want to be focused on. You know, you might lose some people from your community during this time because maybe their priorities have changed. But then you don't necessarily need those people in your community if they're not going to be engaged with you because it's the engagement that's going to get you more customers. It's going to get you more connections during this time. It's going to keep you top of mind when it comes to coming out of this pandemic and how people are really reacting acting to you as a brand. Um, so the things that you can do to make sure that you are being social on social media is, that always sounds funny to say, social on social media, but you can encourage dialogue with your content and you want to make sure you're asking questions. Ask people how they're feeling. You know, it can be as simple as, you know, drop an emoji in our comment section with how you're feeling. It can be that simple. You want to create a low barrier to communicating with you and creating dialogue with you during this time, especially if people are getting screen fatigue right now, but they're still scrolling through. You wanna make it easy. Uh, you don't want to ignore comments. That's a really big no-no. Um, it seems like it might be obvious, but a lot of times some people uh, will go into their, their social media channels and they'll look 
you know, every four or five days, but you want to make sure that you're getting in there every day, just to make sure you're not missing comments. You're not missing mentions and shares, especially on platforms like Twitter, where if someone mentions you in their, in their Instagram, sorry, not Twitter in the, on Instagram, if they mention you in their Instagram story, um, that Instagram story is actually going to disappear within 24 hours. So if you're not checking, you might miss it. And it's a really, it's a chance for that you might've missed to actually grow your community and create that more meaningful connection with someone. Stay away from constant sales. This is a hard one for, for brands, especially during this time, because it's so tough. And I know a lot of businesses are really feeling the pinch right now, but you want to make sure that you're focusing on that relationship building rather than focusing on always that hard sale because people are not going to feel connected with you. They're going to feel like you're constantly just selling to them all the time. Um, you want to make sure that you're engaging daily. And again, it could be as simple as going in just to check, just to make sure you're not missing anything. And then you can set times for yourself um, that you can have that screen time. If you're starting to feel screen fatigue, schedule it in. Do your 30 minutes of social media every day or every second day, whatever it is, and make sure that you're getting your time in there. And then you can stop. You do what you can during that time and then you walk away. And that's okay. Um, show some personality. Evan, you asked the question about um, whether it's okay to talk a little bit more about the person behind the business. This is absolutely a thing that you should be doing. While it's it's harder for brands to show that, you know, they might be um, in the same boat as their audience is, a lot of people forget that behind brands, there's always going to be a person or a team of people and people will always have feelings and people will always be interested in connecting with other people. So it's that human to human connection that you want and you want to make sure that you are sharing personal stories and you're sharing, um, you know, the ways that you're getting through this as a business and as a team um, and as a business owner. And so it's really good to kind of showcase those types of personality um, characteristics behind your brand as well during this time. And the last thing to think about is you want to make sure that you're having fun. This goes again, be social on social media, but you want to make sure that you are having fun with what you do. Even if what you do is educational and just sharing straight laced information, make it fun for yourself. You want to enjoy it because then you're going to do it. It's a high stress time. And if you're doing something that you're not enjoying, you probably won't put all of your you won't put all of your energy into it. And you want to make sure that you are enjoying it so that it's almost like an escape uh, from what's happening in the outside world right now. And you can just use social media as that escape for your 30 minutes, your one hour every day, whatever it is you decide to schedule and have fun with it. Because once you have fun with it, your audience will have fun with it as well. So. Those are all the slides that I wanted to go through. Um, so I will be answering some questions for a couple of minutes. Um, so Trevor asked, what social media platform should my business be on? That is a loaded question and not one necessarily that's, um, that's pandemic related. However, if you find yourself having more time, you could add different platforms onto your strategy right now. But what you can do is you want to make sure that you're hanging out where your audience is. And so if your audience is on Instagram, you can be on Instagram. If your audience is a professional audience, it's B2B. LinkedIn might be a really great place for you or Twitter. Um, sometimes it's a little bit of trial, trial and error. You can look at where your competitors are and what's working for them and what's not. And if you do go the trial and error route, um, it's okay to say, wow, this is really not working for me. I think I need to switch it up. I don't need to be on Twitter right now, or I don't have enough time. The idea is whatever you choose, whether it's one channel or five channels, you want to make sure that you're putting your effort in equally across all platforms and that you can actually spend the time that you need to be successful because it's better to be on one social media platform and do it really, really well than be on five different platforms platforms and not do any of them very well at all. That answered your question. Any other questions on Facebook, uh, Facebook for business of? I, um, okay, so let's, let's, okay, Facebook for business. That, Facebook for business is a challenging one right now because organic reach is definitely down. Um, 
it works better for you. And this ties in, Doreen, with what you can talk about um, in terms of paid social media. So there is, you know, you will need to put some money into it. But Facebook for Business is really great if you want to create a community or a group um, where you can actually continuously and more privately engage with potential customers. It's a little bit more of a targeted approach, but it works really, really well in terms of building a community on Facebook. Again, it's just one of those things you might have to put a little money into it to grow it. And again, my opinion on it is that you want to make sure that you're hanging out where your audience is hanging out. That's really the more important thing that you need to think about. Because if you want to be on Facebook, but none of your audience is, then there's no point in really putting your effort into being there. In terms of paid social media, what's the most affordable? Um, LinkedIn, I would say, is, is quite pricey. The most affordable, I would say, would be Facebook and Instagram. And again, that would really depend on where you are as a business as well. And you want to make sure that um, the most affordable thing for you is going to be what the biggest return is for you. So if you're spending a little bit more money to, um, to advertise on LinkedIn, it actually might work out better for you in the long run anyway, because if you get more customers from it, so you're making more money back from it. So you have to kind of weigh the cost and the cost benefit of each of the platforms for you and where your audience really hangs out. Engagement when people need privacy on family law issues. Yeah, okay. So law is a whole other beast when it comes to social media. Obviously, there are different sets of rules. What you're going to be looking to do, Carrie, is you really want to, in the legal profession, set yourself up as a thought leader. And so you are going to be more focused on information sharing. Um, people can then, they won't necessarily interact with you, um, but you are sharing information. So you may not see as much engagement coming back. But you might want to focus your efforts on creating a really great blog where you can actually see all of that data coming in and you can see people actually reading the content. And that's how you know that the brand awareness is going to be a little bit higher for you. So social media really is a gateway for you to drive traffic to your website, which is true for a lot of people. But in law, if especially family law, if people aren't interacting with you on social media, there has to be a way to measure that. So you need to really showcase your expertise and drive people to really your communication hub, which is your website, which will then drive them to hopefully convert into clients. Uh, LinkedIn posts, what type of posts work better than others right now? What stops? So again, John, that's a great question. Um, but you really need to look at what's going to resonate most with your audience. And so, and I know that's, that's kind of that, uh, the consultant, it depends. You always get that joke. That's the answer. It depends for everything. Um, but you really want to look at what is going to resonate well with your target audience. And sometimes that means listening on social media. Sometimes it means really looking at what people are engaging with most often. Um, but really when it comes to LinkedIn, you do want to, again, it's, it's a little bit what we were talking about for carry and family law issues. You want to make sure that you are putting yourself out there to share that information. And you want to make sure that you're putting yourself out there as a thought leader so people can actually get to know you and see that you know what you're talking about. And so I know a lot of people are kind of going more on the, the, I would say the less professional route on LinkedIn. And I would say as a business owner and as someone who is wanting to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool, you want to stay away from going into kind of the cutesy entertainment things. I would stay away from the really like hilarious memes, even though everyone loves memes. Um, but for LinkedIn, I would keep it a little bit more professional and really focus on sharing that information and putting yourself out there as a thought leader. Um, any new innovative advertising platform happening? So advertising isn't necessarily my forte. So I'm, I can get back to you on that, Doreen. Um, I do, I know enough to make me dangerous and I know enough to, uh, to run a great Facebook or Instagram campaign. Um, but that is something that is, that I, that I like to, uh, to make sure that I educate myself on before I would give an answer to that. So I don't necessarily have an answer to you on uh, any new innovative advertising platform. That's Sorry about that. All right. I think that's my time.
If you have any other burning questions or you want to uh, have a chat, um, be dangerous. <laughs> live life dangerously. I have a toddler. I live like danger, live dangerously every day. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't necessarily have enough information to actually share that. Um, but I know that there are social media platforms that are opening up different advertising opportunities, but you want to, again, it always comes back to what's going to make most sense for your audience. And so whatever platform you're on, for your audience is the platform that you want to actually advertise on. That's the simplified answer. But I don't want to get in trouble and go over. Um, you're welcome, Carrie. Thank you for stopping in and uh, having a listen at what I have to say. Um, you can find me on the people chat. We can chat one on one. We can connect outside. You can find me at songbirdmarketing.com. Um, I will put this back up so you can get my contact info. Um, feel free to spam me with emails as long as they're nice emails. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thank you.